Hey, Twitch on Wednesday. How's everybody doing today? Up next, we got Dustin's Vinyl Podcast with the newest heartthrob of Hollywood, Dustin Chapin. Yeah, listen to that, huh? That's a new band leader, my good friend. You might know him from Netflix, Hulu, all the comedy clubs around the world. <laughs> One of my best friends uh, in the universe. Give it up for Anthony Capper on the show today, everybody. Yeah, Thank see? You. Thank you, buddy. Good to see you. Thanks for doing the show. Thanks for having me. This is it's fun so far. Right? It's only been like four seconds in and we're yeah, crushing it. But I like it. <laughs> You know, I figured you can't have a music show without a little music. You know what I mean? It's like it just feels off. You know, they won't let us play the music. So I figured I would just bring in a guy that, that could play for us. I think that's and, you know, that's it's, it's a good substitute, you know? Yeah, I'll play stuff that sounds kind of like yeah. the records you're listening to. <laughs> yeah, just different a little enough. Off. Yeah, <laughs> just a little off. You know, you make it like your own sound to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good, man. It's good to be uh, live, I guess. That's what's happening now. Everybody's just happy to be, you know, breathing. Um, still in L.A. I did. Uh, how's the comedy going? You're not doing much out outdoors, are you? Me? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a little uh, Zoom stuff. I got a couple, two more weeks, I think, and then I get the, the, the second shot and then I'll start. Oh, okay. What'd you get? What kind of, uh, what are you doing? Moderna or something? I did Moderna. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that's pretty good. It's kind of like the Costco version. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. like, like the Kirkland brand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got, I got, I got Pfizer, which is, you Ooh. know, yeah, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm impressed with their, um, you know, their Viagra work. I figured if they could, <laughs> if they could crush uh, whiskey dick, they could crush COVID. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 All right, I'll take a rim shot. You know what I mean? Uh, whatever it takes to get through this monologue. Um, <laughs> no, I uh, I did some shots. I did a shot, uh, shows, shot, Jesus. I did a show last night um, on a rooftop, and uh, it was probably the worst experience of my life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just one of those shows where you're just up there and, like, you know, it's it's hard to pull off, you know, kind of comedy in, in a distracting setting. You know what I mean? Like you're trying to do comedy and there's like a helicopter, you know, there's, 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 there's like always a, a helicopter, right? It's a helicopter. There's like this beautiful scenery behind it. you. Can't match a sunset. Like whatever joke you have, it's not going to compete with that. So they're just looking at the sunset and it's like, the whole thing is ridiculous. And there was like really, really big comics on the show. And there is nothing that brings me more joy than seeing a comic. That's way more successful than me. Eat a dick on stage. Like it is the greatest feeling in the world. <laughs> Guys with their TV credits and their stuff, and you're just like, ah, it's kind of like it makes you feel it just it, it balances out the universe. It's kind of like when we watch Michael Jordan try to play baseball. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's like, you know, <laughs> he is human. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I just don't think all, everything works on a rooftop, you know. Um, I think music seems to work okay. You know, you do comedy and music, so that's, you know, kind of you're a double threat or just a threat. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just threatening. <laughs> yeah. Well, you look, you know, you look Middle Eastern. hey oh, <laughs> canceled, canceled, canceled. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel music, they've been able to pull it off. You know, those those um, famous uh, concerts that were on the rooftop, you know, uh, the Beatles had the famous one where they, you know, did uh, music on, on a rooftop and everybody's flipping out. And then you two kind of hacked them and did uh, video. This uh, I, I forget what it was. Streets has no names or something. It's a song that I always hear when I'm at Rite Aid. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> see, I shouldn't have told that joke in the pre uh, the pre pre show. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but music seems different because comedy you gotta like you know you gotta drop the punchline so it's just harder but anyway it's uh it's good to be alive it's cinco de mayo it's like how yeah. exciting is it it's just it's go ahead, play some cinco de mayo stuff what do you got <laughs> oh shit <laughs> Ah, 
there it is. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you that knew was what it was, awesome. even without the saxophones. I did. You know, it's hard because you're like, whoa, what's happening? Uh, <laughs> great job, by the way. I was um, Thanks. I was looking for my kazoo so I could play it, but, uh, do the saxophone parts, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, Cinco de Mayo, very, very, first of all, this country is nothing without Mexico. And I love everything that is Mexican. And that's why I'm in LA. That's why I'm, that's kind of why I'm a Democrat. Just let all the Mexicans in. I don't give a shit because I love Mexican food so much. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like you're Mexican, right? Or, oh, Me? or you're um, Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. But uh, I, I like know. burritos. <laughs> So that's pretty close. <laughs> I love Mexican food so much. I can't even, I can't even, I, um, but I like the good stuff. Fuck Chipotle. I want the good stuff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I want to, I want a Mexican restaurant in a shady neighborhood. Cause that's always the best food. You know what I mean? You walk in, it's like next to a check cashing place. You know, they got like bulletproof <laughs> glass, you know, you go in, they got like, you know, this weird art on the wall. Like it's got like the Pope and Rick Iglesias and you know, just Jesus <laughs> playing pool. And then it's like a weird gift shop. It's always like some Virgin Mary pinata chiclets and uh, a VCR. <laughs> And but it's the best food because it's somebody's abuela just handcuffed to the stove, flipping tortillas. <laughs> all right, that's why I like you. You laugh at my shitty jokes. I love it. So love our random pull today is actually you played the song Tequila, and this is an amazing album. This is Chet Baker, who's one of the finest trumpet players of all time, and it is a really cool. It's just all inspired kind of mariachi songs and stuff like that. But this is such a cool album. It's just really hard to find. I, I found it in Texas uh, at a little record store, and um, it you know it's great. It's easy to get really good jazz and albums in Texas because. Nobody's buying jazz. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's very hard to find a ZZ Top album, but you can find <laughs> some really good <laughs> jazz while you're there. But uh, so yeah, so we're we're gonna get this show started. Um, I think I'm gonna you know I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try a new intro song. Let's see if this works. <laughs> so right. here we go, guys. <laughs> right. Welcome to Dustin's Vinyl. This is the show. I really hope it don't blow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to tell you about music and comedy. I got me a co-host. His name is Jeffrey. You might know him from the Irishman or social media. He loves music and he loves to read a lot of Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> I got another co-host. <laughs> His name is Adam. He will get your questions to us. Try not to cuss. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a good time. We may even talk about the band Sublime. <laughs> hey, everybody. So welcome to the show. Take it away, Anthony. <laughs> My co-host today, we got Jeffrey Paul and Adam Holtz. Hey. Yeah, guys. Look at that. All right. Right, huh? Come on. Now yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a fun show. Yeah. Welcome, Anthony. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks Times. for thanks for having me on. It's great. Got a little pizzazz today, Jeff. I, I you know, I, I just I go through these things. I'm like, you know what? We gotta we gotta kinda jazz it up a little, see what happens. <laughs> Add some tunes. Yeah, like the like the wrap up pop. Thanks, man. I thought we did a good job. We're bringing, trying to get some new blood going with this. It is fun. How you doing, man? Good. You got a little secret of Mayo? Heard you had a few tequila shots. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. I'm actually going to a, to a Cinco de Mayo party after this too. So funny. Uh, yeah. Jeff did tequila and Adam uh, ate an edible right before the show. Right. So we are perfect today. But it's going to get weird in 12 minutes. <laughs> That's hilarious. 12 minutes. It's going to be a really fun show. That's what we had. <laughs> have, you ground, done, folks. have you ever done edibles, Jeff? Uh, no, I have not. I, oh, wow. I don't think Surprising. I have either. I've done a lot of cocaine, but I don't think I've ever did edibles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, you can I'm, eat cocaine. <laughs> you can, I don't know if they bake. I don't know. Maybe that's like, do they do that? Do they do like powdered donuts with cocaine? <laughs> I, I don't know, but you know, you could like dip your finger in and go like that, and that's kind of like eating it. Yeah, you know, we yeah. can always try, Anthony. <laughs> <We> can, <laughs> Adam, you seem like an edible guy. You do edibles? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> It's a really fine line, though, between, uh, you know, if you eat just a little, you, you, you have to eat the right amount. If you eat just a little bit, then you're you're not leaving the couch. You're not leaving your place. Oh, OK. You can't go. Too it's much. really OK. Right. Yeah, it seems heavy. Some, when it's in your stomach, like, I don't know, I prefer smoking it. I, I can't imagine eating weed. It just feels off. It's hard to time it out. Yeah. You know, if you're if you like if you're trying to do it for a show or something. Yeah. It might not kick kick in when you think it will. And then you yeah. have no idea uh, how high you're going to be. Yeah. Well, performing and being messed up is like always a bad idea. Jeff, have you ever had a bad experience like that? You've been drunk on stage or anything? Uh, not doing comedy, but doing like uh, plays. Yes. Oh, I thought and you were going to say right. when I was on it the was... force. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, and, and I was driving the car too. <laughs> <laughs> or, or teaching that would have been hilarious too yeah. Yeah. Jeff was a it's teacher kind of like that scene policeman. from the wolf of wall street yeah <laughs> how great is that scene there's like crawl into the thing yeah. <laughs> so funny i love that scene well happy secret of mayo this is gonna be a lot of fun today and uh yeah man so yeah it's you know i like tequila i, I can't drink it anymore but uh that song i love i think that's such a good song like that's like, awesome, yeah. such a get up and go song like it's just like you can't not have a good like you could be in the worst mood and there's no way that you're not going to be in a good mood after you hear that song like i, I feel, i've been playing i just dance around the apartment it's crazy yeah it's one of the few instrumentals that hit top 10 and oh really yeah and stayed top uh, 10 the, wow. the cost of time that's yeah. huge what year was that probably like 60s 60s, 60s? yeah very cool. That who was Richard? Off the top of my head, sixty-five, but it could oh. be. Off. Do we know who originally? Uh, who originally recorded that? I don't Adam, even remember. Adam, do you know? Can you get a little see. fact check on that the original tequila song? And we have some questions today. We want to throw out before the show starts, so you guys have, feel free, Twitchers, to hit us with some uh, answers throughout the show. We'd appreciate it. I don't know if you have a Jay. Can you put that little list up there? That little list of questions. If not, I'll ask him anyway. Let's see. All right, I'll just go ahead and ask him. He'll put them up in a second. So what's the best song to get your lover in the mood? That's one of the uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the song. And it's great for Cinco de Mayo. Um, and uh, which band or artist, this goes with what we've been talking about, would you want to party with? And and then the last one is what's better on meatloaf, ketchup or gravy? So <laughs> these are poignant questions. And we want to know your answers throughout the show. But we're going to start the show with uh, with Jeffrey Paul bringing us the featured debut because this month is debut albums. And so debut Jeff, albums, debut albums. So Jeff is going to talk about our debut okay. album. Hey, well, we're, we're going with a with a WAPA today. Um, and yeah. And, it, it, you know, our timing couldn't have been better uh, because, unfortunately, the guy who wrote this album uh, passed away t- two weeks ago. And so we're talking about Meatloaf's Bad Out of Hell. Uh, the album is written by. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's written by Jim Steinman, produced by Todd Rudgren and basically performed by Meatloaf. Um you know, what, what can you say about this? I mean, over 50 million copies sold worldwide. Um, this this is an, uh, an album that mixes influences. And the thing is, the, when this album, you know, was in the writing stage, it initially was supposed to be kind of like a, a rock opera about the next level of Peter Pan. Like, OK, after the initial story, this is what it was supposed to be. Um if you know Jim Steinman's music, he you know uh, he wrote for uh, Bonnie Tyler, he wrote for Cher, he wrote for Celine Dion. I mean, you know, it, it, my my point is, is it's over the top, big, you know, big crescendos, uh, you know, just 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 grand, and um, that is really evident on this album. Uh, when it was reviewed initially, Rolling Stone gave this zero stars. Oh wow, zero stars. Zero? zero yes. that's that's pretty insane yeah uh so i mean they really read that right anthony's uh, new album got two stars they got zero stars that's yeah. crazy. anthony you're two stars ahead of me okay so we're expecting big things for you in the future <laughs> and the thing is you know it's Steinman is theatrical you know this this thing plays out like like a play um meet and and 
Steinman met Meatloaf when Meatloaf was performing in the Rocky Horror Show, and Steinman was the musical coordinator for that show when they were doing it in L.A. So, ah. um, it, it, yeah, so it turns out to be uh, Bad Out of Hell. So let, let's let's break down some of these tracks, right? Um, so the song Bad Out of Hell, which is just, I, I think every song on this album is, there is not a clunker on it, but Bad Out of Hell, to me, it was, it was always my, one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, Simon wanted to write the ultimate uh, car crash motorcycle song. Remember, like, those songs were big in the 60s? Yeah, because yeah, this yeah. album comes out in '77, and you know it was written in the mid '70s, so it wasn't that far removed from this era. Um, if you listen to the song, have you? Ever, you, you guys know the song, right? How it starts. Dun, dun, yeah. dun, dun. Okay, that is actually Good a anti. takeoff. Okay, <laughs> that is actually a takeoff on Jailhouse Rock. Mm. You know, if you listen to it, okay, oh. it's just a variation of it. So he's playing that with one hand. Bum, 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 bum. And then he's playing the medley, you know, the medley with the with the other hand. OK, so it's, a, it's kind of like a fast piano riff. That dun, 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 Right. And this is how the song develops. And the song is really sparked by the story and the lyrics. And the thing is, Steinman, when he's doing this song, like, you know, he's 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 like a whiner. You know, if you ever. Uh, I mean, I love Jim Steinman. He's been my favorite songwriter for, for a number of years. And so this is kind of like a, a known story in, you know, in music. Um, but he would whine to, uh, what's his name, uh, Todd Rudgrim about uh, wanting a motorcycle song. He wanted, he had to have a motorcycle song. You, hey, I need a motorcycle. That's the way he would say, I need the motorcycle song. So Rudgrim was, okay, fine. Fine. He goes, we'll do the motorcycle song. So Simon goes, do you have any sound effects? So uh, Rudgren is like, fuck that. We don't need sound effects. I don't do sound effects. And he did it with his guitar. OK, uh, he made what you hear on the record was done in one take. And then it goes into that epic solo. OK, um, but but the, but right before he records it, uh, Rudbin also had kind of like a weird sense of humor, dry sense of humor. He goes, he goes, uh, before we do it, Jim, would you like a um a Kawasaki, a Holly, or a Honda sound? And uh, Simon goes, you know, a, a, a Holly. And uh what's his name? Rudgren goes, Yeah, I thought so. Um, but that's how that whole song came about. And it's it just becomes, you know, one of the signature songs. But it's not the signature song on the album. I think the song that everybody knows, if you've been to a wedding or any type of a catered affair, you know, Paradise by the Dashboard Light is like the, you know, was the second big hit off this album. Um, and this is a song if, you know, you know, how one night can ruin your life. You know, uh, you can't get just more like marriage, bleak. just like marriage. Exactly. You can't get more bleak than that. Okay. He goes, you know, look the lyric. I swore I'll promise I'll love you to the end of time. I'll keep that promise. I'll keep that vow. Now I'm praying for the end of time. I hurry up, let it arrive. You know, that's as bleak as it gets. Um, but I think the story with, with this song is how they got Phil Rizzuto. And uh, Jim and Meatloaf, you know, were big Yankee fans. I didn't know that. OK, but they were big uh, Yankee fans. So they Simon knew he wanted to have a sex scene. And, you know, listen, it's, the song is going to be played on AM radio. It's this it's the late 70s. So how do you kind of put a sex uh, 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 scene in a in a six, seven minute song and be able to play it on AM radio? Baseball. Baseball analogy, uh, you know, first base, <laughs> second base. All right. So he uses those metaphors. So nowadays it would nowadays it'd be right wing uh, rhetoric. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get an AM radio. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they they loved Phil Rizzuto because they watched him on the uh, on the Yankee broadcast, and so. You know, Steinman made sure he threw in a ton of holy cows during this. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, and Todd hated it. Rudgren, he's like, why do we need this? Like, he kept questioning it. He's like, don't worry, it's going to work, it's going to work. So now they have to get Phil Rizzuto. And they had to go negotiate with his agent. And if you're a baseball fan, you know, Rizzuto's agent was Art Shamsky, who was an ex-Met. He's the guy who makes one, uh, one of the great catches in Met history, right? In, in, the, in the 69 World Series. 
So they get um they, they negotiate with them. Well, you probably shouldn't have an ex-Met negotiating an ex-Yankees contract because how much do you think <laughs> Phil Rizzuto got for this? How much? Thousand dollars, no royalties. <laughs> Wow. Whoa, yeah. no royalties. <laughs> no royalties. Did, did MTV book that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a Comedy it's Central, MTV, right? Yeah. Yes, if they would have booked it, you would have gotten $400 and maybe a ham sandwich. Okay. <laughs> but so, so the thing is, it took Phil forever to record his part. And here's the reason why. He needed to know every detail. Who are we? Who, who are they playing? You know, um, what, what what time uh, in the season is it? Like, and he kept because he kept uh, doing it. Like, you know, holy cow! I think she's gonna make it. like you know, like you know, Simon wanted to be exciting. Wanted there to be a crescendo at it. You know, and the thing is, he never heard the song. You know, until after he recorded it, because he didn't want to be involved in anything that was a little sexy or suggestive. And it's probably a good thing he never heard the song. He may not have uh, done it, but you know, it becomes. He becomes identified with the song, right? Um, then let's go to let's go to another uh, uh, song. I mean, another one I just think is just unbelievable. Uh, was two out of three ain't bad. That was the first single. That's what puts him on the map. And I don't know if you've, uh, Dustin. I don't know if you, you you know you know with with song how it was initially supposed to be written. You know, or, or performed. He had it in mind as a Johnny Cash song. Okay. You know, this oh. was supposed to be a country ballad. You know, you know, lonely hearts. You know, you're losing your woman. Oh, and it's supposed to be two ain't bad. Yeah, well, slow, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like you know, I want you. I need you. Right. <laughs> That's the way he wanted it to, to, to be to be done. Um, but someone suggested, you know what? Um, the Eagles. The Eagles are really big right now, and they had a string of hit singles. Why don't we perform it like an Eagles song? Mm. And that's what they wound up doing. And you could hear it in the chorus and the harmonies, you know, uh, like the Tequila Sunrise song. And, the, you know, remember like the early uh, Eagle songs, you know, uh, right before Hotel California, a lot of harmonies, a lot, little bit of country in there. And I think that's what makes the song stand out. Um, also, also, it's like it's not just a sappy uh, song like if you listen to Jim Steinman like throughout his career he always throws kind of like a joke he has a, a dark sense of humor weird sense of humor like like the lyric um, ain't no Coupe de Ville lying in the bottom of a cracker jack box you don't hear that in songs a lot, a lot right a cracker jack box very <laughs> no, very say typical. that anymore Jeff it's very politically incorrect you can't say <laughs> you can't say cracker jack you box. can't say cracker you can't just you can't use that word I don't you can't even eat them I don't know if you knew that if you're white you can't eat them <laughs> I, I, well, you have to eat poppycock now. Okay, so, <laughs> so, if it was, so if this song was to be recorded in 2021, ain't no Cooperville lying in the bottom of a poppycock <laughs> bag. <laughs> but it was just very typical of a Steinman uh, lyric, you know. Um, I, I I love everything about you know. I love the way he he wrote music. I loved his lyrics. Um, I think another song uh, that on this album again, they're all good. But uh, you guys know uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, that's all power chords. You know, the rift is, is if you listen to the riff of what that song is, it is identical uh, to the who's we won't get fooled again. You know, oh. dun, 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 right. Right. Wait, what is that? I don't know. What, I don't know what the chords are. OK. Uh, but but, but, <laughs> but if, again, in next typical, time we'll give you some. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say, in typical Steinman esque. He it, it's it's combined. So it's so he was also a big fan of Phil Spector. So you hear the Phil Spector medley. And what I mean by that is a lot of chimes, a lot of bells. You hear this a lot mm -hmm. with the with with uh with the with the Ronette, you know, with the uh, Ron, Ronettes, right? Um so it's so it's like that. Uh, but it's uh, a power riff played with um a, a Spectre medley. And I think that's what makes this song stand out. Um this song was supposed to be uh in the Peter Pan musical where Peter asked Wendy to marry him. What? Okay. So that's wow. where that was, was uh, coming from. Um, he, Steinman had it a fucking imagination folks. He really uh, did. He, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't know there was a Peter Pan connection with this album. I didn't, I never picked yeah. up on that. I like, mean, apparently get, like, meatloaf ate a lot of Peter Pan peanut butter. I'll tell you that. <laughs> 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 Dustin, look on the album. I think the closing song is Heaven Can Wait, right? Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. It's a simple, beautiful song. In fact, it's, it's like a lullaby. It sounds kind of like a music box, um, but it's, and it's nothing but a piano and voice on the record. Um, this was also supposed to be for this Peter Pan musical. It was called Neverland. And this was supposed to be after Wendy uh, sings it to Peter after they get married. Okay. Heaven Can Wait is not the last song. Um, okay. So that's the second song then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, for, right. For crying yeah. out loud is the last song. For crying out, for, for yeah. crying out loud. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't write anything down for crying out loud. Um, it's a, <laughs> it's <laughs> because because it was one other song. I didn't want to go over every song, um, but I did want to go over uh, "All Revved Up and No Place mm-hmm. to Go," which I think was another great, great song on this. Yeah, I and, love that. that's probably my favorite. I love. Okay, the, cool. The energy and of that song. With, with this, this was mostly arranged by uh rudgren todd rudgren um, cool. this was originally supposed to be another one of these epic 10 minute songs and then rudgren was like hey look do we have to do does everything have to be an epic you know he goes maybe can we just write like a simple four minute rock and roll song and he changed the arrangement and it worked it wasn't epic it was it was great it's a it's a great song and on top of that, a, a bonus surprise, he brings in this I, Al, Albano saxophone player, which turns out to be Edgar Winter, who fucking plays notes. He hits notes that don't even exist, and he <laughs> nails it in one take. Awesome. Um, wow. Awesome. I mean, this is, this is to me, in the top five debut albums of all time. This is, this awesome. is a, a great one. First of all, that was amazing. Uh, Jeffrey, Paul, everybody, that was amazing. I know nothing about this album, but I know <laughs> it has really cool artwork. Yep, and it, does. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> it's just a motorcycle and a bat and like uh, and hell <laughs> and hell. Yeah, I mean, look at that. It's just so cool. It's such a cool. I mean, the things up there too, but it's such a cool album. Who who did the artwork, Adam? Uh, so Steinman's cr- uh, credited with the album cover concept, and then it was illustrated by Richard Corbin. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's Steinman. Adam, that goes back to initially what I said about it. You know, he really wanted this to be like, you know, the, you know, the, the car crash thing, like right. the Gen D yeah. type of stuff from, from, from the 60s. But, but he wanted to be with a cooler, more modern edge for the, for the, late, uh, to mid, the mid to late 1970s. It almost has like a Molly Hatchet feel. I think that... It, yeah, know, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Like that, that kind of artwork of that era. Um, yeah, that's, and I remember as a kid, you know, it, a lot of albums, you just saw the artwork and you didn't know. You, right. didn't, you just see, like, you'd see Boston. You wouldn't see the band. You'd just see the cover. Iron you know, Maiden. Yeah, Iron Maiden, you know, a lot of bands like that. And it's just like, but how would you not want to buy this? You're a kid right. in the 70s or whatever. You're just like, you know, of course I'm going to buy this. And then you listen to it. You're like, what's up with this opera rock? But right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You really- what is this? Am I having my period? What is it? But it's, <laughs> but the more you listen to it, this is one of those albums that I've, we've all heard the songs, you know, over and over throughout our lives. But I was listening to it again and I was just like, okay, this is pretty amazing because it just kind of has complexity to it. Yes. Once again, like Rush, uh, 2112, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Where it's just like you're just you know you're just you're you you're, you get lost in this fantasy of this whole thing, and as he's singing, you're kind of you, you know like um like an opera, you know, where you're just like there's emotion into it, and you're just like you know feeling what he's feeling with these lyrics. And I've never seen an album cover where you know the uh, the songwriter was you know kind of just right on the front cover like that. So you know I don't know yeah. if you can see with my ring light, but they you know there's a there's a lot of people that write a lot of songs like Bernie's not on Elton John's you know, covers, you know, as the, you know, so I thought that was pretty cool that he gives kind of the songwriter, kind of the props at the top like that. Yeah. He, he, he got almost like cold billing on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like um, certain songwriters, you know, they look for a muse, you know, his happened to be like a 360 pound muse, you know, who used to play uh, guard, you know, in, in football, you know, uh, but there was, there was absolutely chemistry between really the three of them. You know, yeah. you can't, you can't not put uh, Todd Rudgren uh, at, leave him out of the equation. Sure. And it spawns like one of the great follow-up albums of all time. You know, uh, funny enough, is uh, Bad Out of Head th- uh, Hell uh, Three, and it was you know just just amazing. It had the you know, so you know, I'll do yeah, anything I, for love. I love oh, the yeah. idea of just meatloaf in general. Um, is as a character of music, you know, it's like, you know, first time I saw you know Rocky Horror, and then just seeing him, just you know, just like this. I mean, 
I mean, talk about giving swag to dudes that normally don't have swag. You know right. what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. like, exactly. like that dude wouldn't do too good in like a normal circumstance. We put on some sunglasses, grow the hair out, and get a hit album. He's gonna get some chicks, you know. <laughs> so, and and his acting too, I always love. You know, it's like he always played weird. Like I love him in Fight Club. When he's oh, got he's the, so good in Fight Club. Tits. But, I, but I think you just you just hit it on a, a very interesting point about him. You know, he was kind of like a weird version of punk rock. You're right. He, he, the, the kids who weren't cool, the kids that didn't have a certain look, he yeah. was the guy that you kind of looked out to. And it's like, you can be cool. You can't, yeah. you know, he's you don't have like to the, look a certain way. He's like the, know, biggie, the biggie smalls of his time. You know? Yeah, I guess uh, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's actually yeah. a pretty good uh, analogy. Yeah, it's what I do here, Jeff. That's uh, what you Adam, do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Adam, uh, how'd you told feel you, about this I told you the 12-minute mark is going to start to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, jump in here. You got to jump in here. That's uh, Anthony. If not, I mean, Jeff will just keep spouting out the facts. So you got to, it's like double Dutch. You got to jump in here, man. So, <laughs> and he's got great facts, but you got to jump in. Adam, so how did you feel about this album? You know, uh, uh, growing up, I wasn't really, I was never really that into it. Uh, I mean, the, the, I mean, my main point of reference was always the cover art. My dad had the album. You see that, yeah. you're like, this is just such a badass cover. So cool. And then, like you said before, then it's just operatic. It, you know, it's, it doesn't really match what the cover it is does. there. It does. But, um, <laughs> it's, I think it's going to be metal, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> totally. Like Leonard Skinner yeah. or something. And it's not that at all. But um, I mean, this was the first time, the, the past few days were the first time that I actually sat there and listened to the whole album. And, you know, right away, I, I you know, I pretty much recognized every single song from Q1043, from Classic Rock. I mean, there was. It, it, it's but i mean it's it's an album i appreciate a lot more now and it's uh the, what i what i found especially with um especially with um the first few songs um especially bad out of hell there was this uh kind of springsteen vibe to it too there was uh you know a little bit in that piano sound a little bit like uh thunder road in there nice yeah, there's a lot of really cool little gems that you, you know, pick yeah. up on pianos. Springsteen and said he was influenced by them, too. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Anthony, how'd you feel about this album? Uh, well, the first time I heard it, I was probably 10 or 11. Uh, my mom had it on CD. And uh, I, it's the same thing. I, you know, I, I think I was expecting something different based on the cover. You know, I, cause I, I listened to, I was into kind of like punk rock and then some metal like Metallica and stuff like that. And so it kind of had a, a, a look like it could have been a Metallica album or, or something similar. So I think when I heard the music, I was, I was uh, a little disappointed, but, uh, you know, later listening to it, I really appreciate that. It's, um, I, I, I love concept albums, you know, and it's kind of, it's this big epic kind of concept album. And so, so I, I like it. It, it, but not at 10, not at 10 years old. Yeah. I wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah. Everything. I, girls, I wasn't really into at 10. So you, you grow into things. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any twitchers out there? You want to uh, talk to us? Talk to us, twitchers. What do you got? Meatloaf. Yes, we got a, uh, what do you got? Let's see. Uh, all right. In terms of meatloaf, we got, um, yeah, we got uh, Jay dies a lot. Says the artwork is great. And all the bad of the hell uh, albums. And, we got a bunch of answers to the questions too that you okay. Let's you do some meatloaf first. Do some meatloaf, and then we'll okay. get to the questions later. All right, cool. Any more meatloaf, guys? Uh, do you like no. this? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> other other than, other than the, uh, the questions are too good. I apologize. <laughs> no, other yeah. than the uh, Fight Club reference, his name is Bob. Bob. His name is Bob. <laughs> yep. That's right. His name is Bob. Um, you know, fuck it. Let's do a question. What do you got? All right. So let's start with. Um, we got, why don't we start with question one? What's the best song to get your lover in the mood? So we got um, Jay Dyslot says, I turn on reggae mix. We mm. got, uh, let's see. He's got a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be putting on reggae with a little piece. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't play reggae. <laughs> What do you got? Sticks? What do you put on there? <laughs> I, think I, I, I go to is Sade. Yeah, that's pretty Sade. solid. I think she's pretty, you know, pretty sexy. She's pretty, pretty moody. Yeah, I got a medium size, but I still do Marvin Gaye. So and Marvin Gaye can't go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I really can't go wrong with that. Yeah, yeah that's good one too. It's pretty solid. What about you, Anthony? Do you have a, a go-to um, lover song? 
I don't you really just play ha- your own music while you're yeah, like. I just play my own- <laughs> <laughs> it did happen one time, but I didn't put on the, the horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This, this is my uh, new song. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, this is a bunch of my demos. Up on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't I, you know I I just kind of would would listen to whatever I like if I had a, a woman coming over or something I would just uh, play Fugazi or something like that and that would just be playing oh. and, and then we <laughs> nice. <you know. laughs> but I yeah I, I never really tried to uh, play sexy music. Yeah, it can be a little cheesy. You're like you're trying. If you put on Barry White, I mean, and she, she's it's you're trying too hard. You know what I mean? Like you gotta. You know? Yeah, and it's like you're expecting. You know, if you're just listening to whatever, then you just let it happen. Whatever. I'm not happens. gonna lie. When Marvin Gaye's on, when Sexual Healing comes on, I I start to laugh a little, and it's like <laughs> during the middle of it, you're like, okay, we should probably skip this song. This is just <laughs> a little Dustin too funny. Is, Dustin is his silk robe. Yo, let's get it on. Okay, you're fantasizing way too much about me, and I'm uncomfortable. So this is a me too moment. I don't like it. All right. Will you receive that invitation to stay over your apartment if I go to LA? Yeah, come on. I don't care. We'll be like David Bowie and Mick Jagger. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, they got to live a little. Video. They got to live a little. Hey, we, and we all drank human blood, right? Yeah. Video, so. we, we've tasted it. Adam, do you have a song? Do you have a song you like? Uh, you know, I, I usually go with whatever's on, but Todd I remember Joe was on. Go ahead. I'm for, sorry. So, for some reason in college, I used to put on the doors. Ah, and uh, You can't go wrong with the doors. Right, but, awesome. but, but it would get weird once it got to the end. And then you're just like, oh, I just want to slip my wrist right now. Especially when it was, this is the end. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you probably you probably had yeah sex with a lot of cutters. Then maybe that was it. <laughs> if you're a cutter, please seek like, please seek help. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> you probably should have well, thrown well, my fire storm. <laughs> All right, do another question. What we got? Do the second right, question. Uh, second question. Uh, what was this? Uh, which band or artist would you want to party with? We got uh, Happy Mischief says uh, ZZ Top. Ah, we got really? um, okay, a lot of whiskey, mm. I would think. Yeah, we got a uh, Mad Dabbins and a uh, Wiz Khalifa. Wiz Khalifa, um, oh, you'd get arrested for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do three to five with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Afflu- Affluent Distant FL says Miley Cyrus. Mm. Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> so she- yeah, she'd probably get pregnant, but um, that would be a good time. I guess she does party pretty crazy. Yeah, she scares me because she parties and I don't know. She's young and that just feels like you would get arrested just by hanging out with her. And uh, then you got to bring her dad. You know what I mean? That's like, well, it'd be one of those things where, like a dad just wants to hang out. You're like, dude, go away. I'm like partying with, you know, I'm like, he's like, hey, guys, he just sets down. Like that. that dad that tries to party with the kids. You're that you're that dad, right, Jeff? You're like, <laughs> you're like, what are you guys doing? What are you shots? Yeah. There'd be some te- there'd be some teenage party going on. I'll be like in the corner over there. You, you guys want to hear some meatloaf? <laughs> Look at this cool art. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll tell you the whole story. <laughs> Gather around, kids. <laughs> Two hours later. Okay, we gotta go. <laughs> and they're like, who's meatloaf? Kids all spacing out because they're eating ed- edibles, right? <laughs> <laughs> meatloaf you know what that's a question what did anybody answer the meatloaf question yeah I th- uh, let's okay. see here so what would you put on uh meatloaf ketchup or gravy we got a uh mad dab says gravy um i had somebody else in here said ketchup oh affluent oh. uh distant fl says ketchup yes and a- we got a uh ew meatloaf so <laughs> <laughs> the singer or the actual food um I, I like ketchup i'm white trash like that like i i remember one time i bought a um i was at graceland and uh elvis this is hilarious you know there's so much shit in the gift shop and it, there's a uh, elvis cookbook of all the stuff that basically killed him uh, is in <laughs> it's in this book this cookbook and one of the things is ketchup meatloaf recipe i've been making it for years but i like ah. ketchup i'm gonna go ketchup that's where you got it from 
I go, I go <laughs> catch my meatloaf, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's just weird. Don't tell people that. I don't want people knowing that I fed you meatloaf, all right? <laughs> I know Jeff's fantasizing me in a, in a Hugh Hefner robe. <laughs> and, uh, e- e- eating a meatloaf sandwich. <laughs> I, also, a- I also like ketchup on it. Yeah, ketchup. Yeah, I'm going to go ketchup. Here's a funny story back to the cookbook. So mm. we were in Graceland and years ago, I was by myself, or whatever, I was on the road, but it's, uh, and then you take the tour. Have you ever been to Graceland, anybody? Yeah. I yeah. drove by it on did tour, you, but did it you was take close. The, <laughs> well, that's cool. That's good enough. Uh, yeah. Jeff, did you take the tour with the headphones? Yes. You remember yeah. that part when they got it in, in, you're in the dining room and the Priscilla's voice comes on and she says, you know, Elvis would get obsessed with food. One time, we uh, and we had to eat whatever he ate. So one time he just ate meatloaf for two months, and that's all we ate was meatloaf for two months. <laughs> that sounds a little abusive. You know, <laughs> anyway, the real thing. Sorry. Okay. Meatloaf is kind of like Fat Elvis, but if he was cool. No. I like meatloaf. No? I... <laughs> like the Fat Elvis period. Now you're but, off the show. But... <laughs> 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 we have a one one bad joke minimum. All right, um, don't, maximum. Don't That's be shooting on Elvis and Meatloaf. Come on. <laughs> no, I said Meatloaf was the cool version right. of the Fat Elvis. Oh, I think you're talking about the food itself. Oh, okay. No. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like Neil Diamond is the Jewish Elvis. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, or yeah, like uh, uh, mm-hmm. Jimmy Buffett. I think that first Jimmy Buffett album was supposed to be for Elvis. If I'm. Oh, really. Oh, for I, Elvis. I, I, okay. I'm pretty sure it was written for Elvis. Elvis signed off on it, and then he died. And then Jimmy Buffett was like, I guess I'll do him. Let me tell oh, you, okay. if you, with that story, you can go on Sirius XM on the Elvis channel, and they, they can do an hour on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're looking for any type of Elvis content. We don't want to lose our guitar guy, okay? Stop <laughs> giving him. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> You get a good show together, and then <laughs> Jeff wants to break it up. <laughs> he wants all the attention. Okay, anybody else? <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of votes for um, gravy. We got uh, okay. we got two votes for gravy. We got another vote for uh, ketchup. All right, that was riveting. All right. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the comments we're getting right now. Okay, that's cool. Perfect. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. All right, Adam, bring us into our featured second album. All right. So we got. Uh, we're... I don't know. Thank I'm you. I like, no, that's music. great. That's great. Absolutely. That's great. Still working that's great. out the kicks. You're doing good. All right. So we're going way back to the year 2020, and mm. um, we got a. Uh, we got the debut album of Barty Strange, which is uh, "Live Forever," and this is the uh, it's a stage name of uh, Barty's Leon Cox Jr. Uh, producer and songwriter, and um, I mean, this is just a this is a genre busting album. I mean, you got you have hip hop, you have indie rock, you got anthems, you got electron, you got electronica, you got R and B, you got folk, you got gospel, and then sometimes all in the same song. And it's just this is just I I mean I think this is one of my favorite albums um, from last year. It's one that I discovered on a bunch of different uh, end of year lists, which are always great to just discover new music with. Um, and uh, I bring up the songs here, but I mean, I, there's really, I, I think, I mean, all these songs are great on this album. There's, uh, you know, the, the standouts, Mustang, the big anthem uh, Mustang. There's Boomer, the hip hop, kind of a little bit of surf rock in there. Um, there's, um you know, you got something like Moss Blur, which is the experimental rap that goes right into Far and Fallen For You, which are just stripped down acoustic and really Fallen For You, which is so lo-fi. You could hear you could hear the squeaking of the of the feet in the studio. And uh, this is just a, a fantastic album. Yeah, I loved it. Um, you know, because you know me, I love when there's something new I haven't heard. And, I, you know, you feel like you've heard everything and I hadn't heard anything like this. And uh, yeah, you described it really well. I mean, I feel I had a fusion of so many different sounds and I think that was uh, boomer. I really like that song. And, yeah. uh, you know, Jeff, we're boomers, but uh, <laughs> you know, I feel like it was just it's such a good album of, of, you know, expert, you know, experimental stuff and just, you know, really enjoy the sound. Like just every song got a little bit better and uh, his voice is fantastic too. And oh it's yeah. Like, 
you know, it's just it's just so nice to know there's still talent emerging. And so I guess it's nice that there's new music that happens because most of instinct for guys my age to be like, ah, music sucks now. And so when you hear something come out that's new and somebody young and then it's good, it's like it's refreshing, you know, and he's not doing covers like Miley right. Cyrus and shit like he's doing his own shit. And so I love it. It's all arranged and just really interesting stuff. It's really cool. It's just uh, every song has its own kind of unique sound to it. I loved it. Oh yeah, I was I was listening to an interview with him right before this, and um, he was talking about Boomer. Boomer's his biggest, at least his most played on Spotify, probably his biggest hit right now. And he said he was really nervous putting out there. He thought he created a Weird Al song because it was such a medley of different genres <laughs> right in there. Anthony loves Weird Al. Yeah. <laughs> He's my dad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anthony, did you like this album? Uh, yeah, I, I I did like it. I uh, the first couple of tracks, uh, I mean this as a compliment. It gave me kind of a a, a more hip, cool version of Coldplay. Okay, did anybody mm. think that for the just I thought, just the uh, first couple? Yeah, I thought uh, even um, a I little bit the TV cure. on the radio too. Oh, I could hear. Yeah, I could hear. Yeah, there's a little cue where I heard that too. I feel there's a bunch of different sounds, but it was good. Jeff, did you like it? Um, I, I, yeah, I, I kind of did. Yeah, um, I, I'm I'm kind of with Anthony on this a little bit. Um, because like the first song, uh, Jealousy, um, I didn't like at all, and I was like, oh fuck it, Anthony, uh, Adam, what, what are you picking? <laughs> and uh, and then, but then I uh, listened to to Mustang and Boomer and uh, Stone Meadows, yeah. and I thought those were really good songs and you know I, I, to me it seemed like it seemed like almost every other track was okay and then there was a song i really liked so it kept me it kept me vested into the album um but yeah but, but i like um i like listen man this is this is a guy who i think took chances uh is a original is playing original music and you know I, I like to see where he goes uh, next from this, but, but you can hear like he was, I, that was a great call with uh Coldplay, you know, it, you're right. I, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here, yeah, but, but the thing that came to me was, was when we did disintegration, I could hear pieces of disintegration yeah. in some of these songs. I'm happy you liked it, uh, Jeff. Cause I wasn't sure. Cause I know sometimes you get angry at some of uh, Adam's picks. But, um... <laughs> well, no, no, <laughs> What do you, uh, Anthony, how you feel about Daft Punk? Are you a fan or not a fan? Uh, I never got super into them. I, I only really know the the singles, uh, but I like the singles. All right. Well, if you ever want to get Jeff riled up, just say they're <laughs> geniuses and they're the best thing happened to music in the past ten years. Just say that once in a while, and it's so funny to he might have a heart attack. It's amazing. Just to watch I think it's boil. pretty cool that it could be any two people wearing weird helmets. Yeah. I mean, they did a documentary, so I think they showed their face, but, um, right? They showed their face in the documentary? I think they did. A couple old yeah, dudes. Uh, yeah, That's uh, the best part. It's just a couple of old dudes. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually me and Destin. Yeah. <laughs> we know a Daft Punk. Yeah. They're like, That's hey, you guys cover. want to talk about meatloaf? That's his cover. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would have a Twitch show if I was Daft Punk right now. We are on an island. No offense, Twitch guys, but <laughs> ketchup or gravy? All right. <laughs> 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 Very cool. Um, yeah, so great. Thanks for that, uh, Adam. That was great. I feel I'm really excited to you know keep listening to him, waiting for some new stuff. I think you were saying he's uh, got a live tour coming out as well that you're going to... So he's, uh, I think he's opening for um, Lucy Dacus, I think, uh, um, on, on her tour. And then he's going to be at Governor's Ball. They just announced the lineup. He's He'll be there Friday. So oh, that's it's, awesome. Where's that yeah, at Governor's Ball? Uh, so Governor's Ball's on uh, Governor's Island in oh, uh, okay. Manhattan. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Leon Bridges is going to be playing there, too. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that was another good find. That was a good call. Yeah, that was a good one. Very cool. So what's what's new out there, Adam? What do we got coming out? All right, so the big one for this week is the new Weezer album, Van Weezer. This is uh, Weezer's hard rock metal album. Oh, wow. And just, yeah, so it's inspired by Kiss, Sabbath, Van Halen, Rush, Obviously, Metallica, and Slayer. Halen. Yeah. So that should be an interesting one. This is their second one. Um, I think the second one this year, right right after OK Human. I feel like that's kind of a, it's, I, I'm into it. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like it's like Christmas album is always the like, okay, we need to make money. And then the other one is like metal. I mean, Pat Boone had a metal album. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, did. I feel like it, it's the, it's the second thing we are like, ah, how can we sell more records? You know? 
Let's just right. go outside <laughs> of our genre a little bit. But anyway, I'm sure it's cool. They're very talented. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to hear it. You guys have to. Well, maybe we should cover that one. Yeah. That'd, that'd be, yeah, fun that'd be a good one. Let's do yeah. that as one of the new albums. When does it come out? Next week or? Uh, Friday. Oh, Friday. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Maybe, maybe we'll do that. Anyway, what else cool. you got? Sorry. Uh, yeah, so then uh, we got uh, we got Amy Winehouse at the BBC, a three LP uh, release. Oh wow! It's, the, um, it, it's from performances from two thousand three, oh four, and oh seven on the BBC, and uh, it's available for the first time on as a audio only uh, release. Oh, cool! You can go it. on YouTube and watch those performances, and there's a great version of uh, 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 Tear. tear What's that song? The Tears. Uh, dry tears dry tears are falling well, kiss no. asylum <laughs> album <laughs> tears, dry on their, tears dry on their own right, oh, right. Yeah. you know remember that song tears are falling oh the great yeah. song yeah i wouldn't say great but it's it's, oh, it's, <laughs> it's like great. i said like i said <laughs> they're in my top 10 oh my god kiss? really i love kiss oh, i love man. kiss i was i saw kiss live once and i was bored <laughs> How the fuck were you bored at Kiss? I don't know. I was this surprised This the actor fire. He spits blood. What do you want, Anthony? I don't know. He's 50 feet up in the air doing a shitty that's bass great. solo with blood coming out of his mouth. I don't Come know. on, man. That's, that that's, not, that's not easy to do when you're 78 years old. You know what I mean? That is very difficult to pull that up. I saw Kiss and loved him. I saw Because the thing is, is the Anthony, you didn't have to go to a church parking lot in Texas and burn your Kiss albums in, in 1980s or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we had to do we're like burning our kiss albums because our parents are way too religious <laughs> so when i got to see kiss it was huge it was yeah like, i, I did yeah care. that that would be the difference because my mom listened to all kinds of mm. rock and roll you know the ramones and like just all kinds of you know just so i don't think she mom, liked kiss that much but i grew it like it wasn't a big deal to like rock and roll well who who took you to kiss uh i went with my cousin and then my i think my mom was there my aunt and my uncle it was okay. Kiss and Aerosmith. Okay. God, that's a great show. It was really, it was it was good. I mean, I like four of the Kiss. Uh, Aerosmith went on last. Okay. I think it was maybe billed as a co-headlining, but and Aerosmith who was playing was drums? Good. Was was Peter Chris playing drums? Uh, yes, but I think because it it was a fake Ace Freely. It was because what yeah. happened with that tour was um, this was when Kiss was kind of like, you know, on like, you know, they, it was one of their down years. And so in order to, you know, Gene always wants to sell. So what happened with that was Aerosmith said, we'll do a tour with you, but you have to have at least three original members. And so reluctantly, they wound up bringing in Peter Chris back again because Ace was already out doing his own thing. Nice. But I thought it sucked that they because they always gave new members their own makeup. But this they just had. Ace Frehley's makeup on some other dude. Yeah, Tommy Thayer. Yeah. yeah he's still in the band to, to this day. I thought I thought some of their best albums were uh, the four albums that they did without makeup with, mm. uh, with Bruce Kulik. Animal Eyes is fun. That's, uh, I like that album. But uh, They yeah. tried to do like a grunge album, right? I mean, they tried everything. Their Unplugged is pretty good. That's oh, yeah, great. their Unplugged was not yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah there's a yeah. great uh, solo yeah, gene job. song on that. Very cool. All right, Adam, anything else? Yeah, we got uh, here's another uh, live album, New Order Education Entertainment nice. Recreation. That's it's fun. live, live from no uh, November 9th, twenty eighteen, in London. It's three LP. It's got wow all the all their favorites and uh, four Joy Division songs on nice. it as well. Nice, I oh, saw cool. them live. Check that out. Such yeah. a good, such a good concert. It nice. was great in Texas. Anybody and let's else? see. Yes, yeah, so we. Uh, Let's see. Since we talked uh, Jimi Hendrix last week with um, with, the, with your poll, uh, we got Hendrix and jazz, mm. various artists, all songs reinterpreted in jazz. Like Hendrix in jazz? In wow. jazz, yeah. Like pur Purple Haze on a trumpet? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was pur Purple Haze is one of the songs listed on there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What do you got, Anthony? <laughs> I'm trying to do some little... Please do. That sounded it. good, man. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We like it. The show's been fun. Welcome to the show, Anthony. I think it's a, I think it's a fucking plus. So I think yeah, it's, good. it's fun. It's been fun. Yeah. It's like Anthony, new member of Dustin's Vinyl. Uh, <laughs> very cool, guys. Uh, is there any more questions before we go? Because, you know, you, you only get this opportunity to talk about meatloaf and ketchup. And <laughs> what song do you... Maybe if you don't have a song to get your lover in the mood, what song do you get yourself in the mood to touch yourself?
You had a song. <laughs> What's the name of the song? The Divinals. <laughs> when I touch think myself. of you, I touch myself. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're going to close out the show with our brand new uh, team member, uh, Anthony Caffer, is going to close out with one of his songs. Please follow us on uh, Dustin's Vinyl on Instagram, Dustin's Vinyl on Facebook, and also follow Jeffrey Paul, Adam Holtz, and, and Anthony Kapfer on all the social media platforms. If you want to Venmo us, go ahead. I'll share Do it what? out at Dustin Dash Chafin. We would love the money so I can buy more records to talk about. <laughs> but uh, check out uh, all the music that we talked about today. And happy Cinco de Mayo, compadres. Vamanos, Anthony. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Not very good at playing this guitar. I really only playing one chord. So I bought a book and I learned another chord. But I lost the book and then I forgot that chord. Oh wait, I remember now But playing that second chord just made me bored So I tried to make up my own chord But it didn't sound right, so just ignore the chord you heard me play before. Back to the drawing board once more, therefore, get on the dance floor, but save your vocal cords. The chord store has locked up all its doors. There will be no second chord on chord to endure. You've been warned, so don't ask for more. <laughs> Anthony Cap for everybody. Thank you for watching Dustin's Vinyl. Thank you for listening on the podcast. See everybody. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>